Welcome to Electron Line. When we try to solve problems involving simple harmonic motion, we're often faced with the challenge to find either the position, the velocity, or the acceleration of the object that's either suspended from a spring or that's being pushed or pulled away from the equilibrium point in a horizontal situation. So what kind of equation do we need to solve that problem? Well, that depends upon one thing. Do we know anything about the object in terms of position? Or do we know something about the object in terms of time? And that makes all the difference in the world. If, for example, they ask you, find the velocity when the object is 3 centimeters away from the equilibrium point, then you want to use the equations on the left side of the board. But if they ask you the question, what is the position or what is the velocity of the object, three seconds after we push the object away from the equilibrium point, then you will need to use something like this, one of these three equations. In other words, what we're saying here is, if you're trying to find the velocity as a function of position, the acceleration as a function of position, or the position as a function of velocity, then we need to use this equation right here, or at least the equation that's in one of the equations that's derived from the concept that the energy initial equals the energy final, or the concept that F equals MA. So let me explain. If we assume that we take the object and we push it up against the spring, compressing the spring, therefore storing energy in the spring, we know that when we have completed that action, when we've pushed the spring to its smallest dimensions, we have potential energy stored in the spring, and that is always going to be equal to one-half k times a squared. A would be the maximum displacement away from the equilibrium point. Then we'll let that object go. Now the object is going to be going back and forth, back and forth, picking up speed, slowing down, compressing the spring, the spring will push the, the object back, and so the energy then is contained within the block, both in terms of the block's kinetic energy and the partial the energy that was stored in the spring initially, a part of that will still be stored in the spring, unless the object is exactly at the, at the equilibrium point, then all of the potential energy that was initially in the spring will now be only kinetic energy, and there will be no potential energy. Other than that, it will be an interplay between some amount of potential energy and some amount of kinetic energy, depending upon where the object is at. From this equation, we can drive an equation solving for V in terms of position or displacement from the equilibrium point, which looks like this. We can also use this equation to solve for the second equation right here, to solve for position as a function of velocity. Both of these equations come from this initial concept that energy initial equals the energy final. And finally, if we then combine Hooke's law and the concept of Newton's second law, we combine those two equations, we can solve for the acceleration of the object in terms of its position. So this equation will give you the velocity as a function of its position away from the equilibrium point. This equation will give you the position in terms of its velocity. And this equation will give the acceleration in terms of its position. But sometimes they give you the position in terms of time. For example, they'll say two seconds after the motion started, where will the object be, how fast is it moving, and what will be the acceleration. In that case, we start with the base equation that the position as a function of time can, can be written as the, the magnitude of its oscillation times the cosine of omega times t. Remember that omega is defined as the square root of k divided by m, k being the spring constant and m being the mass of the object. From that equation, we can derive this equation, and in a later video, we'll show you how to do that, and we can also derive this equation. But in other words, not only can we express the position as a function of time, but we can also express the velocity as a function of time and the acceleration as a function of time. And if you then take a look at this equation right here, this portion, a times the cosine of omega t, is equal to this, which is basically the position as a function of time so when we replace all of this by x, we can write the acceleration as a function of time as being minus omega squared times x. And if you then look over here, that's actually the exact same equation that we have here. So it is the same concept. However, these equations allow you to find position, velocity, and acceleration as a function of either position or velocity. And these three equations allow you to find the position, the velocity, and the acceleration as a function of time. So if they tell you or they ask you, find the velocity of the object two seconds after we, the motion got started. Don't try to solve it using these equations. It won't be possible. You'll have to go to this equation right here. One more caution, the quantity in the parentheses right here 
omega times t together will always be in radians. So when you try to figure out the solution for position, velocity, and time, make sure your, your calculator is in radian mode when you take the cosine of this angle, the sine of this angle, or the cosine of the angle in either one of those th three equations. At least here now you have an overview of all the equations that we use in simple harmonic motion. In the videos to come, we'll show you how to actually apply those equations, how to actually solve the problems. But quite often, students are confused as to which equation they need to use. Now, hopefully, we have that straightened out. If it's a function of time, use these equations. If it's a function of position and velocity, use these equations. And that's how we know the difference.